Hello, good morning. Um, it's the morning time in Ireland and I'm delighted uh, to have the opportunity to talk today to Laura Stearman, the artist who has provided the image for the next Congress of the EFP, of the Euro Federation of Psychoanalysis, People 10. Um, and uh, you can see the image. Welcome, Laura. I'm going to ask you first of all, how did you begin? How did you get into this very unique and singular form of art, which you may also want to describe for us? Hi, everybody. And uh, thank you, Florencia, for chatting to me. It's, um, it's a pleasure. Um, it's very different. It, it always amazes me where the art has has led. It's um, it's been such an adventure. Um, and to go back to your question, it's um, my daughter is turning ten in June, and it was my my pregnancy, the first pregnancy with my daughter. Um, I was an attorney and working long hours. Uh, it was it was a busy time and it was so new. I was the first of my friends, my family to, to have a baby. And this very new experience just, it just blew my mind. I mean, my, and my husband's as well, but particularly because it was, I mean, it, there was this amazing thing happening in, in my body. And I, I'm a person who likes to feel a little bit of control over things, but I felt I had no control. So it, it was a slightly anxious time and joyous time. And what happened then that really led me to, to creating the ultrasound art was Adelaide was, that's my daughter's name, she measured very small. The scans became a very important part of, of really punctuated my pregnancy experience with these times where, you know, you could get this glimpse into what was going on in your, in your tummy. And there was a little bit of concern because she was measuring very small. Um, and then as the pregnancy progressed, um, there was some reduced movements. So it was a time I suddenly learned what uh, things could go very wrong in my mind. And there, there was nothing I could really do about that apart from keeping myself healthy, trying to rest as much as possible. But thankfully everything was perfect with her. She's absolutely perfect, thriving child. Um, she's just quite small. I'm quite small. Um, and it's, it was going to those ultrasound scans, mm -hmm. um, meeting the doctors, the midwives, and it was a very tense time finding out would everything be okay? How did she measure? How was she moving? Was she growing? And everything was healthy. And they would present you, you're probably all familiar with them, with this little black and white image of, of your baby afterwards and they would print it off and it was so small it was this size and it was blurry and you know it, it very much fulfilled the the medical the clinical purpose but to me it was the the joy and bringing that scan then show my husband and oh just the the absolute relief and it was it was pure joy and to me being creative um I was always creative even though I was an attorney uh, with a very busy job that was how I would relax and kind of express myself as well. Mm -hmm. So it was to create something from that scan to represent the joy. Mm -hmm. And actually a, a, really, a really good quote that somebody shared with me recently. And I said, that's it, that's, that's why I do this. Um, and it's an Aristotle quote about the aim of art is not to represent the outward appearance. It's all about the inward significance. And that's what those little black and white images meant to me. I think I think that the, that's wonderful because one could believe that the image of the scan, since they exist, they didn't exist, for example, when I was coming into the world, but since they exist, we could get the sense that they give us a, a, a way to see hmm? what's going on for us. But what you are saying is that there is something, your, your artwork based on scans is extremely colorful. Uh, everybody has commented on that uh, with regards to the people poster. And what you're, what you're saying is that 
um, that wasn't enough to uh, do something with the order of the experience in your body, even though there was an image. Yes, mm. and a very beautiful image, but it it was to it was to capture our experience, our emotion, and as the pregnancy developed and then she was born. It was to, I went back over those scans and I, I then put in more as her personality developed. I painted a few of them. Um, and with all my children, and I have three lovely children and each pregnancy was different. Our journey as a family has had just so many changes over the years. We've evolved as people, as a family. And it's adding, I think it's adding that touch, that, that color, that feeling, that emotion, that experience into what is a very, in, in my mind, just visually, I mean, it's quite a very basic image. Um, and it's to tell that story. Mm. And I, now I've had the, the absolute pleasure from sharing some of my work with kind of family, friends. And then on social media, I got a little bit braver out of my comfort zone completely to, to share my hobby. I mean, I'm not a trained artist at all. Um, but sharing that, I've now had, it's, I'm now coming close to painting my 1,000th painting based on an ultrasound. Oh, 1,000 1, ultrasounds. Can you tell us something about the, the rapport, about the connection that you establish with those who come to you to have, um, to have their ultrasounds turned into a piece of art? Of course, yeah. I, it, it's there's something that when your children ask you, you know, what do you do? And I'm sure it's the same with, with your profession as well. When I was an attorney, I would always say, I help people. That was a bit, you know, something very basic that a three-year-old, four-year-old can understand. And I think the same with the artwork. I, I don't just paint for people. Um, I help them. Um, and there's been so many stories, no experience is the same with all of those paintings and all of those clients. So it's, it's what I do is I help them. We build a rapport, we, they, they talk to me. People share very intimate details. Some people may choose to not share, just share the ultrasound. Maybe they have a preference for, a, a, to match the baby's nursery. Mm. But maybe it's more powerful than that. Maybe there is, I have some paintings behind me from some clients. Um, these were painted for a very good friend of mine. So she let me borrow them back. And this is a piece, the large embryo scope that's going off to a family in America. And I think that's a good example to show you the, the mm. rapport with clients. Um, very much this baby was uh, a wanted baby and the family had to go through IVF in order to, to be able to, to have her here today. And they felt, even though it was quite, uh, it's, it's a difficult procedure. It's very tough emotionally, mentally, financially, physically. But beyond that, beyond what that experience was, they see the joy, the color, the, the little princess. You know, it's, it's very girly pink, very soft, and also some bright colors as well to match her bubbly personality. She's, uh, they felt, you know, she's so much more than just this, those little cells back in the beginning, which is incredible. Um, and these boys here are brothers and it's a family's journey from having their first baby. And that was very much, you know, straightforward experience. They were excited. It was a little bit daunting, but these were in colors to match their kitchen. Mm. Um, what then developed as I painted the babies was uh, also with their family journey. They have an angel baby. So they, unfortunately, Jamie here had passed away um, quite late in the pregnancy. And it was, you can only imagine, you know, a, a very devastating, heartbreaking experience for the family as a, as a friend, you know, you, you feel that loss as well. And it's loss, pregnancy loss is a difficult topic, I think, naturally to talk about, for people to, to ask about. It's quite taboo, I mm -hmm. think, fair to say, in, in some countries, some cultures. Many years ago, it may not have been spoken about at all. But now, families 
really want to talk about it. They would like to include that baby in their conversation, in their life. So Jamie here is painted in really bright colors. They imagine him, you may not be able to see very closely, but um, it's quite vivid. He's in the stars. And that's a lovely way for also his younger siblings to understand mm. where is our baby brother. He's very much part of our family, always spoken about. And it's him in his scan, he was giving a little wave. So the family shared that, you know, this is very important to them to have something beautiful that people will talk about to give vibrancy to his life, albeit a life that was too short. And Danny here was their, their third baby. And he's actually painted in a, a particular flower, a coral color flower, became very important to the family over the years. It was part of the bride's wedding bouquet. They've decorated their home in, in some of these colors. And Danny is just after, a, it's called a rainbow baby mm. in Ireland, where often people say after the storm and the difficult period of a loss, you have a very just joyous occasion of your rainbow baby arriving. So he's painted very brightly. That's all inspired by, you know, the, the happiness he brings and the, the completion of their family. So every story is different. Yes. And I think what you teach us is how, um, in a sense, your art is the proof that um, for human beings, images um, are never um, enough. You need words. You speak about stories, about narratives. And the title of our forthcoming Congress is actually not just wanting a child, but it has a subtitle, which is um, Desire for Family and Clinic of Affiliations. So in a way, although we're going to be interrogating a lot of the things that you mentioned, so I'm very thankful that you uh, that your speech went there. Um, I think my last question will be, Laura, um, is there anything that um, as, a, as a mother, as a woman, um, uh, as an artist, you get as a sense that cannot be captured neither by the image nor by the words or the stories. Yes, it's, it, it's a challenge for me at each commission. I think I, I, I wonder, have I, can, I, can I do this experience justice? You know, it's, it's a very special thing um, to be painting people's babies they're you know the uh, even looking at I mean the cells the wonder of it all and how to capture that and do it do it justice um it's a, it's a monumental thing I think wanting a family then you know living with that family and growing up together so I, I don't know if that answers your question um I, yes. I feel th th there's a slight overwhelm about mm -hmm. it and so something that goes beyond, something that exceeds. Hmm. Yes, I think it's a challenge. I will always, I, but I love it. I think I put that energy, sometimes that anxiety of how can I do, do this? How can I make something incredible for this family who've maybe had a very easy pregnancy, a very, oh, there's, there's been paintings with very dramatic circumstances. Hmm. One lady um, was involved uh, in, I remember a few years ago, she had been in, in Brussels airport when there was a, a bomb that had gone off, a terrorist attack. She was pregnant, she inhaled some fumes and she was fine, thankfully, but she was rushed to hospital to check on the baby because they were worried how that would affect um, her baby. It was midway through the pregnancy. Um, the baby was perfect. And one of the things we talked about during the commission of, her her baby's painting was she said it was so important she was still traveling she was still going all over the world and that was so important to her mm. to not be afraid to not let fear run your life this was something she wanted to instill in her child as well mm. 
so that that would be very uh to me one of the most dramatic examples of how do i capture this they've been through this horrendous experience there is there's hope there's joy there's relief and now there's we will live without fear of of what could go wrong in the world we want to show our baby um you know and, and capture that in the painting so it was incredible um, for, for us um, laura this is really uh, priceless because um in psychoanalysis in lacanian psychoanalysis we have a sort of um, Yes, I would say at this stage, it's a principle, which is to, to let oneself be led by what an artist can show us as the way um, with regards to um, very, very complex and uh, very intimate spaces of the human being um, where uh, usually... Uh, words fail so this has been very teaching for us we want to thank you publicly again for um your work that so beautifully illustrates our poster and our congress and we will invite uh, all our um attendees and participants to visit uh, your work uh, in your website Thank you very much. You are most welcome. It's it's a delight to never in a million years would I've imagined where where this journey would take me. And and it's it's an absolute pleasure to talk to you all. Your your work is fascinating. I don't pretend to understand a lot of it, but it's it's hugely interesting. Thank you so much, Laura. Thank you very much. Very soon. Good luck. Bye bye. Bye.